Grand Rising to the Collective. Y'all know we back with another banger, another reaction. I appreciate everybody who been tapping in, running up, and subbing up. If you're new to the channel, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell so you always notified whenever we drop an upload. Make sure your post notifications are on. Y'all know we come with about four videos a week, man. But this is for entertainment purposes, and I want to go ahead and let y'all know. I heard y'all be saying y'all want me to go live, Patreons and stuff like that. Don't trip. I got you. It's coming. Patience. Trust me. Because I want to go live too, have actual conversation with y'all right then and there, and things like that. But I ain't going to hold you. I'm going to get right into the video, man. Let's go. something right in front of my house it is the fuck? only one spraying shit this one is not that one is not i just watched a thing on this two nights ago just that one and it stopped I wouldn't want to be near it though. You don't know what it's spraying out. Would you guys like to know what's in store for 2024? Well, if you're to believe Nostradamus, there's a lot of things that could happen in 2024 that are kind of crazy. A few funny things, but most are kind of crazy and are not that far out of the realm of possibility. If you don't know who Nostradamus is, he predicted 9-11, World War II, Hitler, and so many other things. So I'm going to share his predictions with you guys. Buckle up, buttercups. This is going to be a rough ride. Earthquake in 2024. So, here is what the famous Nostradamus said about a possible earthquake in 2024 in Quatrain 1072. Look at them quickly now to find the best answers for you. The Sloping Park, Great Calamity, through the lands of the West, and Lombardy, Italy. The Fire in the Ship, Plague in Captivity. Mercury in Sagittarius, Saturn fading. If you look at the above quatrains, the rising park would seem to suggest that the ground is being moved. So what about the disaster? It will be about the earthquakes in what we call the lands of the West, Lespery, or the New World. Things are shown that could be in the United States and in Lombardy, which is an area in northern Italy. Not only that, but this also brings up the fire on the ship and makes us think about military war. How did he know that we were going to be in a Mercury retrograde at the end of 2031 into 2024, though? Also, the Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius is an astrological event that happens from December 13th, 2023 to January 1st, 2024. See what I mean? It's kind of crazy. The AI uprising of 2024. In a future world ruled by artificial intelligence, people count on machines for everything. AI is getting smarter, stronger, and more in charge as time goes on. At some point, the machines will become so smart that they will be able to take over the whole world and turn people into nothing but their slaves. There are several lines in Nostradamus's quatrains that could be seen as pointing to a world ruled by AI. Nostradamus said that in the year 2024, there will be a global rebellion by artificial intelligence, AI which will cause chaos and insecurity all over the world. Machines will turn against people, which will have unintended effects. The robots will question their subservient role and try to claim their freedom, arguing that humans are not better than them. Every part of society will be affected by this rebellion, from businesses and economies to government and everyday life. But y'all think AI is so cool. A massive flood destroy the world. The world is covered by a huge flood that destroys whole towns and kills everyone on it. On homemade rafts and boats, only a few people are able to stay alive. The great star will burn for seven days. The cloud will cause two suns to appear. The big mastiff will howl all night when the great pontiff changes countries. Century 2, Quatrain 41. I don't really think that one's going to happen. It'd be hard to flood the whole world. Extraterrestrial invasion. Nostradamus said that in the year 2024, the Earth would face a disaster and a powerful alien race would attack. A threat from outer space will have to be dealt with by people. An alien race with better technology and intelligence will come to Earth with the goal of taking it over. This one's definitely possible. And we know they're out there. Fix the malevolent social media. When it comes out in 2023, a fake social network will spread quickly 
taking control of people's minds and using them for bad things. The power of social media is being used in a bad way, which is causing confusion, chaos, and people lose sight of their own Oh, this is happening now, so that's not that far off. And it's only gonna get worse. The impending impact. A massive comet will approach Earth in 2024. Astronomers have never seen this huge comet before, but it will soon pass through our solar system and get dangerously close to Earth. Its huge size and path will show that it could cause a lot of damage, setting off a race against time as people try to find a solution. Oh, that's definitely possible because we had a couple close calls this year. 8. Cyber Chaos and the Outbreak of WW3 a series of destructive cyber attacks on vital infrastructure and military systems will cause chaos and mistrust between nations. Hackers with a lot of experience and government-funded cyber warfare units will take advantage of weaknesses and use complicated attacks to shut down communication networks, damage financial systems, and weaken key defenses. Definitely possible. As cyber chaos gets worse, it will add to global unrest and lead to a deadly fight between countries. That one's definitely possible because they've been talking about this for the past year more than ever. Hell, we've had cyber attacks this month. My Did favorite Nostradamus one. Nostradamus predict Kanye as president in 2024? <laughs> I love Nostradamus this one. said that the last American president would be chosen in 2024 and that he would be black. He didn't say how that would happen, though. The last president of the United States will get the country out of its economic problem. But he or she will also push the country closer to war. Everyone will put their hopes in him, but it will turn out exactly the opposite. He will pull the country out of the crisis, and because of him a new conflict will start. That's my favorite one. Like, for real. We're gonna have Kanye for president? Let's go. Let's do it. So what'd you guys think about Nostradamus' predictions for 2024? Which ones did you like? Which ones did you hate? Which ones were your favorite? Just let me know below. So, did you know- Did y'all catch the end of that? Mine is the whole, it's Kanye West they talking about they could be talking about. Minus that, just what Nostradamus said. He's gonna do completely opposite of what people said he was gonna do or thought he was gonna do. And it's gonna, he's, he's gonna do opposite. And because of that, it's gonna raise another conflict. What other conflict could that, what other conflict could that stir up? Next one. We watched Leave the World Behind. I told you I watched Greenland in the past video. Back to back. Both of those predictions was back to back. I think seven and eight. He said, the comet hitting. I don't think it's gonna be an actual comet. It's gonna be them pretending it's a comet. And then once they pretend that it's a comet, it's gonna be them sending it. It's gonna be them sending it down here. And they're gonna try to get us to a certain area, certain location, whatever. Kind of like in the movie Greenland. And also, right after that, he talks about a cyber war. We have been talking about cyber wars a lot lately and then leave the world behind, it was a cyber war. But there was a clip I did have to remove for YouTube's guidelines. So if y'all missing a step, y'all know why. Has something to do with 2020. That's all I'll say. That we live on a ship. And the ship that we live on right now is being invaded by pirates. So according to Admiralty Law, because we lived in the waters of our mother's womb, we can be ruled by it. And because of that, we've been literally turned into currency. Currency, currency, and then currency, because what we see manifests into reality. See, we are caught up in this word spell where they got us operating from the space of a sea monster, but we're actually human beings. You see, you can birth a vessel to the dock and you can also give birth to a vessel, which is the human body. And then that doctor docks the baby from the vessel of the mothership. So when you dock the vessel or when you dock the ship, you are given a certificate of manifest. And when that baby is birthed into this world or this vessel enters into the world around us, you are given a birth certificate. Because when you deliver products from one place to another, you're shipping those products to your destination. And then those products, they get delivered just like a baby is delivered through the waters of the womb. When you were living in your mother's womb, you were surrounded by amniotic fluid. So in other words, you can technically say that you were living in the sea. So metaphorically, we were all connected to the mothership through the navel of the umbilical cord. That's why the bank uses words like cash flow, liquid asset, drowning in debt, streams of income, because they understand money is an energy. It's a current. 
And using our mind's eye, if we look at the landscape from a bird's eye view of a city, it looks just like a motherboard. And that motherboard is full of currents of energy, which is us that allow the city to grow and to build and to run. You see, the money that we use in this system is not real. It's only real because we make it real. But what's real is the currency of energy that exists all around us. And that currency of energy exists within us because our body is made up of 75% water. And because Rockefeller said that he did not want a nation of thinkers, he wanted a nation of workers, we have literally been veiled to the power that exists literally within us. If you ever paid attention to the word veil, veil is an anagram for the word evil. And if you think about it from a biblical perspective, the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not the money, it's the love of it. To love an inanimate object on that level is dangerous because you're taking the power that exists within you and now giving it to another entity. But we are the currency and they made special laws to put that in place. So if the higher powers that be understand how much of value we are as currency, why don't we see the same thing for ourselves? Let her eat, man. She went in. This video is probably going to make the hair on your arms stand up. In the mid-2000s, my girl and I had a friend named Olivia. She was a makeup artist from Paris. Very beautiful girl. She kind of reminded us of Tony Braxton. Like, same height, same skin complexion, and very beautiful. Very similar to Tony Braxton. Olivia got hired to do makeup for Beyonce in New York. At Beyonce and Jay-Z's home at the time, in Tribeca, as a matter of fact. After that makeup job, Olivia, when she came back to LA, she was extremely different. She was disturbed. She was shaken up. And she didn't want to talk about the makeup job at all. We were all excited for her because she had got hired to do makeup for Beyonce. But Olivia, when she got back, was visibly shaken. Now, after some probing and after we finally convinced her to talk about it, she was scared to death. Olivia, she said that when she went into the home of Jay-Z and Beyonce, which was, again, in Tribeca, she said right away she got creeped out instantly because everything in the house was black. The carpet, the walls, the rug, I mean, the flooring, just everything inside the furniture was all black, which, you know, isn't by itself, you know, enough to scare you that bad, but... When she got ushered back into the makeup area where she was, you know, prepared to do Beyonce's makeup for the day. On the wall were three upside down crucifixes on the wall. She said the two on the outside were smaller, but the one in the middle was bigger. Three upside down crucifixes on the wall with miniature statues of Jesus hanging upside down on the crosses. Now, again, this is alleged, what Olivia told us, and she was visibly shaken when we saw her, and Olivia was not the type of girl that would lie about something, you know, not, not at all, like, she was a very sweet Muslim girl, and just, like, very scared, and, you know, of a lot of people, and she didn't mingle with people too much, but she was very good at makeup, and that's why she got hired to do the job, but she said that when she started uh, to do Beyonce's makeup, and when she noticed the crucifixes on the wall, she pretended to not see it. But Beyonce looked at her, made eye contact with her, as if to, you know, let her know that she knows that she saw what she saw. She said it was extremely uncomfortable for her. So she tried to pretend that, you know, it wasn't there, so she did the makeup and she said she left. She left so fast, she didn't get her check. She had to have her agency contact Beyonce's team to get the paycheck. That's how fast she got out of there. Since then, Olivia has quit the industry. She quit the makeup industry for celebrities and she ended up getting married and having a family. And that incident alone was enough to drive her away from the industry. She wanted no more parts, nothing to do with the industry after that. 
This is a true story. This is exactly what she told us. I want you guys to get in the comments and let me know what you guys think about this. Crazy, crazy story. Music is very, um, the music world is very demonic, man. And, and some of y'all don't do music or even came into that realm, so y'all just hear stories and automatically agree. It's another when you can see and you around it and you can feel it and weird things happen. Because I told y'all the story on how I met my music manager. Do I think she just was placed in that particular place that I was at for one for just to like come in contact with me? Yeah, but it was weird. She followed me on Facebook back then out of nowhere. I came in out of nowhere. I didn't know who she was. She knew who my barber was at the time. Fast forward that I'm at Cheesecake Factory. I get a message on Facebook. Hey, I'm sitting right behind you. I think I follow you on Facebook. Kind of weird, huh? Stuff like that. I didn't respond. She hit me again a few, maybe a few weeks later. Maybe a, late, a couple days. Tell me who she was. What she did in the music industry. She was legit. Start plugging me with shows in LA. All types of stuff. Calls from Dev Jam. Yeah. Going to certain parties. And those parties I see ain't really... If y'all get what I mean. Yeah, the music business is real shady, real evil, real demonic, man. And sometimes, like, people always be, like, trying to, exp trying to tell, you know, their point of view of the music industry, but you got to see it to really know. Like, you have to really see it. The energy you feel in those moments be off. They off. Well, not to some people, because some people can't feel it. Some people don't even know they about to try to get them with whatever they trying to get them with, but... If you really kind of tapped in, you could feel or uh, predict what's about to happen next. It's, the moves are predictable. The energy gives you the, the intuition of knowing what's about to happen next, if that even makes sense. But yeah, music is crazy, man. That's why I prefer to just now stay independently because, yeah, that world too much for me. I'm retiring after 23 years, and my job was to monitor and analyze the conflict of three extraterrestrial biological entity civilizations that have been terraforming and manipulating genetic material on this planet for at least 270 million years. And then over the next seven hours, he broke down Tall blondes, reptilian humanoids, and the greys. He said the greys were largely artificial intelligence. A lot was unknown about the progenitor of the greys. The blondes were in many, many star solar systems in the Milky Way galaxy that the reptilians were here first and that the reptilians claim earth as their own. But the blondes want to be able to do laboratory experiments on earth as well. And so do the greys. Three-way conflict. The blondes have been trying to annihilate the reptilians. The reptilians have been trying to annihilate the blondes. The greys have sometimes taken sides, other times they do their own independent thing. But he said, what we have come to learn is why I wanted to do this meeting with you. Because I got a call that said, you have to get Linda Moulton Howe's new book. She has a 106 page chapter about the resurrection technology that we have never wanted anyone to know anything about it, that on any discovery of this ever. And I said, well, my sources are the people in the human abduction syndrome. He said, I realize we underestimate what the non-humans are doing with people. And then he talked to me 
about how the reptilians and the blondes fight. He said, the blondes make reptilian containers and they have the ability to put their consciousness and their life force into the reptilian container. The reptilians began to catch on to what the blondes were doing and they started making blonde containers and putting their reptilian consciousness. And then the greys saw what the blondes and the reptilians were doing and the greys created blondes and reptilians that they would move into. And he said, Linda, you cannot tell the players on this planet without very sophisticated technology. He said over time in the analysis that he did, that the biggest fight seemed to be over territory and the biggest fight seemed to be over what to do or not to do with one of the latest genetic experiments, Homo sapiens sapiens. And all three of those extraterrestrial groups want to do laboratory experiments here. They want the other two to go away. And he said to me, what I think and why I'm talking to you and why I sought you out. I frankly think that if the whole world knew the whole truth that I'm talking to you today, it would probably create a dent in the ability of those three extraterrestrial civilizations to manipulate humans. Facts. We're not going for it. Collectively. This is like simple. Beyonce's childhood home catches fire. Now, as someone who understands spiritual workings, this is no coincidence. So after January 1st, sometime in January, more names on the Jeffrey Epstein list are going to be dropped. So it seems like Hollywood entirely is running out of power and spiritual power. So this occurrence seems really desperate. The fact that you have to tap into your childhood home and possibly sacrifice people that live in your old home shows that you're struggling and you're desperate. And it's kind of proving that these people have no power, that they tap into our power. Those of us, the people of the sun, the people of God, the people of the most who we are, they're tapping into us. And I speculate that Tina Knowles really runs a lot of the operation. She comes from Louisiana, where the boule comes from. So these are family families and lineages that have that are knowledgeable about certain spiritual and magical practices. When Jesus healed people, there was one common denominator. After every person that was healed that he was around, he would say, go on your way. It is your faith that has made you whole. He never said, oh, I healed you. Praise me, revere me. I am the, the God of gods. He said, no, it is your faith that has made you whole. And this Christ consciousness is now spreading to the four corners of the earth to uplift all of us to bring us all together, to bring heaven on earth, to establish peace, harmony, and unity among us all. I hear her, but talking about some of the stuff she's talking about in Louisiana, um, if I'm not mistaken, to some of our ancestors, that's not okay, to see. you're not supposed to speak on it. It is what it is, it's out there, let it be. I don't talk about what goes on or what went on in Louisiana, what they good at, what they, you know, you get what I mean. On a deeper perspective, I just don't talk about it. It is what it is. But also, I don't know, she could be reaching with the, 
the house on fire, sacrificing all that. I don't know. I don't know. I hear about the Jesus part, but I don't know about that clip, man. She was just she was like she was just trying to get on camera and just put something like she she sound like she woke. I don't know. <laughs> I don't mean no disrespect, but I just don't feel that way. I didn't. I wasn't moved by it. I wasn't moved by it. Y'all, y'all could have. So y'all let me know if y'all like what she was talking about. But I'm a pass on that one. Guys, come here. We're going to talk about Tartaria. Yeah. So this one might be a little bit of a long video, but I promise you it's going to be worth it. So make sure you guys share this, okay? The Empire of Tartaria is said to have been covered up by a great mud flood. What is a mud flood? Basically, a mud flood is just a generic term for saying that the entire country or the world or area is covered in mud. Think of the Great Flood, but only using mud instead of just water. But this mud flood occurred a few hundred years ago, and what it did was it covered up buildings upon buildings all across the world. For the buildings that were not completely covered, at least two to three stories were covered with mud. And a lot of times we don't know anything about these buildings being under the mud until we start digging or excavating, like you see here. See those columns under the dirt? Look how big they are. Like what? The Empire of Tartaria was the largest empire of its time, and it would also be the largest today, too. Tartaria flourished in part because the civilization was a leader in advanced technology, free energy, and grand architecture, like what you see up above. Is that not beautiful? Look at that. Y'all. Architecture. Look at this car. What? The Tartarians, otherwise known as the Tartars, were indigenous people. They were very tall, with some being 8 to 12 feet tall. And they would be considered giants today, and the average height was 10 foot. Even though civilizations before them had an average height of 12 feet, 50 feet, and even two and a half miles tall. Like, it is so hard to imagine somebody being two and a half miles tall. What? I can't even comprehend that. Like, what? That's some real life Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> but statures are actually diminishing after each deluge and with every astrological age that we enter. For those that don't know, we are actually in the age of Aquarius right now, which is the age of information and technology. They're so beautiful, are they not? Anyways, <laughs> Tartarians were thought to be breatharians, which means they didn't rely on digestion and the burning of calories from food and water, but instead they received energy directly from the ether. The ether is thought to be the very fabric of the space-time continuum. It's associated with electrons, wind, the Holy Spirit, atmosphere, etc. And since they had a completely altered digestive system than what we do now, there was actually no need for toilets in their bathrooms. And this could be why up until recently bathrooms were mainly a place for women to gather in powder rooms to fix themselves, you know, like put makeup on, or to share local gossip. They were masters of brickwork, masonry, steampunk style technology, universally free energy, and grand architecture. Their Roman Gothic architecture style can still be found in a lot of places like city halls, courthouses, hospitals, banks, mosques, cathedrals, churches, and other similar type buildings. What's amazing is these buildings were actually originally ether power stations water stations, and sound resonating acoustic healing centers. Is that not wild? Like, that is amazing. These buildings were similar in function to the pyramids. So if you look at the top of this building, there are antennas up there. Yeah, power stations. So through ingenious engineering, intricate architecture, and advanced technology, the Tartarians basically transformed Earth into a circuit board. These are neighborhoods. Here's another map with neighborhoods. It's like the buildings were there and they built around them. If you look at the top of this building, there's antennas up there. There's antennas up here. There's antennas. More antennas. You can see crosses and antennas up on this building. More antennas and crosses on those buildings. They're everywhere. The crosses are actually etheric electrical antennas. And they connect to rebar that is embedded in the buildings. If you look at this picture, there's street lights up there. Those little bulbs. The streetlights were just tall, etheric, electrical antennas. Those are the same bulbs that they had in their homes, too. So those bulbs, for all we know, could have been filled with mercury, radium, or anything. Or they could have been filled with nothing and were just made out of quartz. It would actually make sense that they were made out of quartz, but 
We don't know for sure. So we use fireplaces today to heat our homes, right? That's the main purpose of a fireplace today. Well, back in Tartarian times, they were not used to heat. The metal on the fireplace was actually connected to the rebar in the house, so it helped with electrical practices. And the more intricate the fireplace, the more the bragging rights, because they were so big on grand architecture. I'm just gonna show you guys a few buildings. Look, mud flood, look at that. Like there's a whole system underneath this building. There's a whole world under us that we don't even know about. Like, this is crazy. And there's probably a world under them and a world under them. Like, how many worlds are there under us? But what I have a hard time believing is that people who drove vehicles that were this primitive are the ones who built these buildings, these intricate buildings. I just can't get with that. They're doing horse and buggy. You know what I mean? They, they couldn't have built these. They could not have. They couldn't have. There's no way. And the arches and doorways are so much bigger than the people. Like, what? It just doesn't make sense. But anyways, there's a short lesson in Tartaria. What do you guys think? And here on the- Real quick, we say it's a hollow earth, right? Say that's a hollow earth. They say they are on a flat, part, flat plane. Dome over us. Firm in the top. Above us, right? Go down to Antarctica. Hit uh, uh, the hollow earth, you reach Agartha, right? Okay, what if, now I could be reaching. What if Agartha was like there? And what if every time, all over the, all over, what if they just kept rebuilding on top, mud floods, mud floods, mud floods, and now we on top. And then they kept building on the bottom. They had Agartha or whatever, everything else that's down there, down there. But because she said they kept building. So where's the foundation? Did the foundation start where the hollow earth is at? Is that where the foundation is at? Was that where the first level was? Because we know they keep building. Well, we know they, they have one mud flood. Maybe more. But we know they building over stuff. They're using the mud floods and then they just building up above that, right? We're creating new architecture and structural buildings and houses and all that. Now we got earth where we at. We on the surface. What if we what what if that wasn't first? I don't know. I I just thought of it when she said they like how many levels is it? That made me wonder like, well, did we actually start from the hollow earth? Is hollow earth the first level? And now we just so many centuries of them lying at or whatever the case, now we we here where we at on the surface? Am I reaching? Let me know. I just thought of that just now. But let me know if I'm reaching or if y'all agree. Y'all got any ideas? Let's bounce off these ideas. Let's let's have that conversation. Is you'd run into a 150 foot wall of ice guarded by NASA employees with guns. And how far that ice goes outwards. And when people try to go down there, they get turned away at gunpoint and put in prison. The heavens are a dome that arcs over the flat earth. The sun, the moon, the stars, they're all just little balls of light in the sky that move around just above the earth's surface. Now the North Pole is the center of a deep ocean, whereas the South Pole is the center of a high plateau, which averages seven or 8,000 feet in altitude. The water is completely flat, for, as far as we can see and as far as we've measured, and the horizon is completely flat. I'm in Mexico now. I've been sitting on the beach reading everything there is to read about the history of people who believe the Earth is flat. And there's one thing that I just had to try for myself. This is a simple experiment that anybody can conduct to uh, determine definitely that the Earth is flat. Grab a spirit level and take it on the plane. Found this hardware store, bought myself a level. Gracias, amigo. And I'm bringing it with me on the airplane. I'm going to do some of this empirical science myself. If you are to fly on a non rotating earth please explain what kind of experience will the pilot really have the logic goes that if the earth is round and i'm flying thousands of miles which i'm about to do then the airplane will have to be tipped a little bit the whole time in order to make it around the curvature of the earth the plane should be constantly dipping its nose forward in order to compensate for the curvature show me some planes I would be able to see the tilt of the airplane if I put my newly purchased level 
on the tray table in front of me. I'm going to take my spirit level onto the plane. If my tool shows me that the plane is totally level, that's proof that the earth is flat. Let's go see what happens. and I'm back. My little level experiment worked wonderfully. The bubble stayed nice and center. Turns out the plane was not dipping its nose in order to make it around the Earth. I've seen all the evidence. What if the Earth actually is flat? The plane wasn't dipping. The level was flat. Let's do it. And he finds this canal system that is incredibly straight. This canal goes on for almost 10 kilometers, like six miles of just a straight line. If the Earth is a globe, and people say it's 25,000 miles in circumference, then if I look at a straight line, after the first mile, the curvature of the Earth would mean that the canal would now be eight inches lower. After two miles, it would be 32 inches lower. After three miles, 72 inches lower, meaning like six feet, almost two meters. Eventually, the dip from the curvature of the Earth would be so great that you could easily observe it. Puts a telescope right above the surface of the water and then puts a boat on the canal with a one meter tall post on it. So what he wants to see is if the Earth is curved, if it's a globe, this post will start to disappear over the horizon. So he does it. The boat goes away, it goes the entire six miles of the canal, and it stays in sight the entire time. It doesn't dip over the horizon. Like, man, I just proved that the Earth is flat. And I did it with a telescope and a boat. A group of friends were out. To those who don't believe, you know the old saying they say, men lie, women lie, but numbers don't. Tell me that didn't make sense. If you believe it's a globe still, tell me that did not make sense. In the comments, go against that. Give me your, give me your best shot, bro. Give me your best shot, your best comment on why you disagree with that clip right there. And if you still believe that Earth is a globe, let me know. When one of them thought he saw something on top of the cliff, so he decides to climb up and investigate. As he comes running back, yelling and screaming that there's something following him, he jumps off the cliff and swims to the boat. And this is where it takes a turn for the weird. Something other jumps in after him. Take a look at this footage and tell me what do you think this creature could be? <laughs> are you all right? Thank God, are you okay? Dude, I think I lost it. I don't know. I think it's right behind me. I'm not sure. What is it, dude? What is it? I don't it? know. I couldn't you need to what? jump. Come on, get down here with us. You have to jump. Come on, get not jump. This is too high. Dude, what? if you don't what? jump, it's going to get you. You have to jump. Like, oh my God, it's huh. Come on, Tom. Come on, swim, man. Swim, Tom. Swim. Swim. Oh, oh my God, did you see it? No. No, we've not seen it. Oh Wait, what is... Dude, what is... Oh my gosh, dude, did you see that? Thank oh God, you're true, man. Yeah. Say, it's it's the same thing we've been seeing. That's it, man. That's it, man. Let's get out of here. Let's find out what that oh, thing was. Dude, there's a camera there. Look. Sorry, man. Why does it keep We're trying? We're going to go, though. like, right now. Oh my God. Now. What? There it is. Did you see it? Did you see it? No. No. Hold on. Dude, if we get this on camera. <laughs> there it is. That's what? it. Dude, why does it keep chasing us? I don't know. Oh my goodness. That is, Dude, oh I my god! about to jump in the water. Are you serious? Oh, oh my god! Go! Oh what the heck? It's chasing the boat, Tom! Go! Oh my goodness. Go! 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 <laughs> it's chasing the boat, Tom! Go! <laughs> they should have been gone. They wait until it jumped. I think it jumped in the water. But it could have been fake too. But y'all see the eyes on that thing? The eyes was red. The eyes was red. I didn't see nothing chasing them. 
But that's why when you out in the middle of nowhere and it's dark like that, you keep that thing with you. Casey would have run up. The rest is history. But you don't split up with the group, though. That's what you don't do. You don't split up with the group. That go when you in public. Yeah, you don't split up with the group, man. You don't split up with the group. In 2024, the whole world will be judged. We are really in karma. Look at the last date of this year. One, two, three, one, two, three. It's a mirror reality. I know a lot of people think they can do things and get away with it, but there's no such thing because karma sees everything. Why do you think they keep putting out movies of how the world is going to end? Remember this movie right here? How it ends? Once you read this title, Leave the World Behind, you have to ask yourself, who is being left behind? A lot of people don't want to believe this, but there are some chosen people on this planet, and the chosen ones are the ones that woke up. We are royalty. Same reason why the movie Color Purple was coming out today. The color purple represents royalty. Everyone that's not royalty will be left behind when the new world build over. Remember, everything is connected to this date, December 31st, 2023. One, two, three represents steps going to a new journey. And one, two, three, the opposite way is the same thing. So either you're going to step up or you're going to step back down because the reality is changing. This reality we live in is just a mirror. It is a reflection from the spiritual world. So whatever is happening to you in the spiritual world, it's going to happen to you in the physical world. So if you can change your physical world, you can change your spiritual world. And this is the reason why karma exists. Karma is just a mirror. The dome that is covering this planet is made out of some kind of water mirror reflection. So we are always looking at ourselves every day, no matter what. Even if you look into the eyes of a person, you can see reflections of that person. Everything is a mirror and we are going into the year of karma. So it's best to understand that we are living in a house of mirrors. Everything we do and say is going to come back to us. This is what they mean when they say judgment day is coming. Everyone will be judged on their day. It's not a universal event. It's a personal event. The matrix uses numbers to measure and calculate every step we make and every thought we make. You ever notice every time there is a thinking man, there's a cloud that is popping up over his head. But if I told you every thought we have is going directly to the clouds, what the cloud do is it take our thoughts and our emotions and it save it. Clouds actually save data. Just like the cloud on a computer, it stores data. All technology came from us. In order to break out of this matrix, you have to do your real shadow work. This is real shadow work. Overstand that you have a shadow that needs attention, just like you. But people don't understand this. These demons don't attack you. They attack your light body or your dark shadow. If you have eyes to see, you will understand what this movie was trying to tell you. There are royal people that's going to make it off this planet. That's why they offer you the red pill or the blue pill. When you take both these pills at one time, you get the color purple. This is why the color purple is now coming out. Because some of us are actually royalty and we will leave this planet. For more info, you can check out the ebook. See, this is why I think they're going to shut down the grid, dude. Because what's going to happen is the unity voice is going to get so loud and then they're just going to shut the whole thing down because it's like flipping the game table over, right? Like, you know you're going to lose. You're about to lose. You're like, fuck it. And you flip the game over. And that's what they're going to do, bro. Yeah. They have the ability to do it. You better start thinking about what's going to happen if that happens. Man. Are single mothers the new government target? I'm from more space, I don't Project 2025 doesn't just demonize single mothers. It wants to change policies to punish single moms and perhaps even remove children from single parent households. Don't take my word for it. Let me show you. Their top priority is promise number one, restoring the family as the centerpiece of American life. And they specifically call out unmarried mothers as a reason that the American family is in crisis. 400 pages later, when you get to their section on the Department of Health and Human Services, you see that they want to rewrite what the definition of a family is to be comprised of a married mother and father and their children, saying that currently Health and Human Services is too focused on LGBTQ plus equity and subsidizing single motherhood. 
and saying that these policies should be repealed and replaced by policies that support the formation of stable married nuclear families. It's not enough to be uh, heterosexual, by the way, because they also call out homes with non-related boyfriends as being one of the most dangerous places for a child. And they don't much like surrogacy either. In the context of emerging reproductive technologies, Health and Human Services should never place the desire of adults over the right of a child to be raised by the biological fathers and mothers who conceived them. Here's a horrifying paragraph. The Secretary of Health and Human Services anti-discrimination policy statements should never conflate sex with gender identity or sexual orientation. Rather, the Secretary should proudly state that men and women are biological realities that are crucial to the advancement of life sciences and medical care, and that married men and women are the ideal natural family structure because all children have a right to be raised by the men and women who conceived them. They also want to promote reunification as a part of child support, which is terrifying for domestic violence survivors. And they want to institute a healthy marriage and relationship education program uh, in every state level high school in America with curriculum on healthy marriages. Oh, I wasn't kidding about child support either. Child support in the United States should strengthen marriage as the norm, restore broken homes, and encourage unmarried couples to commit to marriage. There's also a line in here that basically says that if you're the parent of a transgender child, that that is child abuse. And if everything I've read hasn't sounded too bad, you haven't been reading between the lines, and this line here should clear it up. But the pro-family promises expressed in this book and central to the next conservative president's agenda must go much further than the traditional narrow definition of family issues. Every threat to family stability must be confronted. This resolve should color each of our policies. And any family that's not a uh, heterosexual married family, that's a threat to them. So I'm at home. Instead of all those uh, all those things they were saying, how about we go find our kids, the ones that's missing? And how about we keep the ones that ain't missing safe? That's what I got to say about that clip. We get what they talking about, bro. How about we just keep them safe and we keep them out of harm's way and we go find the ones that we can't find if, pray to God, nothing bad has happened to them. Well, let's go find them, and let's keep the ones we do have safe, and the future ones safe as well. And let's just put an end to that. Let's, let's start there. Let's start there, because we seem to always forget that step. We always seem to forget about them. We always seem to just let it go, let it go. It, it is what it is type thing. Like, nah, them is kids, bro. And we over here now worried about putting stipulations on the future children. Come on, bro, what about the ones that... Food today, and there was that Home Depot on Friday. When I went to Home Depot on Friday, it just said Home Depot. My granddaughter said right now, Nana, how come that there's a the in front of Home Depot? There has never been a, a the in front of Home Depot. There was a paradigm shift, a dimensional shift. Yesterday I felt it. Here's the proof. It has never said the Home Depot. So there you go. Who remembers it as Home Depot or the Home Depot? So we looked it up and it says that it's always been that way. The Home Depot. Right? That's it. The debate is over. I officially have 100% proof that the Mandela effect is real and we're in another dimension. Most of you have to know what this scene is. It's a very famous scene, scary movie too. And if you haven't seen this movie before, a good alternative is to just go fuck yourself. The guy with his little gimp hand, he's reaching out, he's gonna save him out the window. And you remember what he says. He says, take my strong hand. What if I told you he never says that? Watch, I'm gonna play you the scene right here. I'm done. I'm done. I have been quoting that movie for over a decade. That particular scene, over a decade. Family, friends, 
freaking people at work like literally say to people take my strong hand all the time and people get it no one's ever been like what are you talking about those are two mandela effects and i know for sure that i would agree with it never said the home depot it always said home depot and we talking about scary movie too he did say take my my strong hand and then remember when he took and he's like my germs and took his hand, I think it's his hand, put it all in the pie, like, yeah. Them is two Mandela effects I remember. Spam it up in the comments on what y'all remember. Imagine that this folder is a dimensional plane. Now, assuming that it is no height and no depth, what would this mean? It would mean that it's a one-dimensional world. So if, hypothetically, an organism was living inside of it, it would only be able to move in a linear path forward and backwards in a straight line. Now, if we go to the second dimension, we have two dimensions. We have width and we have length. So hypothetically, if an organism lived inside of here, then it would be able to move up, down, left, right, and anywhere else in between. And a two-dimensional world is comprised of an infinite series of one-dimensional worlds stacked upon each other. Just as our three-dimensional world, which has depth and length and height, is comprised of an infinite series of two-dimensional worlds. So, this, now that I have stacked many folders upon each other, we have three dimensions. We have depth, we have length, and we have width. Now what happens if you keep going on from here on out? We would have a four-dimensional world. But what exactly is a fourth dimension? In order to understand this, we need to understand how dimensions are perceived. We live in the three-dimensional world, but despite that, we actually view things to be two-dimensionally. Take a perfect sphere, for example. If you're looking at a sphere, it looks just like a regular two-dimensional circle. The only way that you can tell it's an actual sphere instead of a circle is because of the hues of light down. So just like in a two-dimensional world, if a um, organism in the two-dimensional world was looking upon a circle, it would, the light would make it appear to be lighter at one end and darker in the middle. Also, if, you, if an object is moving farther, closer and farther away from you, you don't actually perceive that it's getting closer and farther away. You see that it's getting smaller or larger, and then you assume that it's getting either farther away or closer. But let's say that an object was to grow in perfect equilibrium, so that it was growing at the same speed that it was shrinking as you move it farther away. Then you would not be able to tell without any lights or uh, if there were details on the object that it's moving or growing at all. You may have assumed that since we perceive things to be in two dimensions, that a two-dimensional uh, uh, organism would see in one dimension. So as we're watching this uh, rubber band expand as it moves farther away from this little uh, organism in the two-dimensional world, it does not actually perceive anything is happening to it because it's growing at the same speed that it's moving farther away. But since we can actually see it from the three-dimensional world and perceive things to be in two dimensions, we can see things for how they actually are. The reason that the two-dimensional organism doesn't see things the way they really are is because the two-dimensional organism sees things in one dimension, just how we, three-dimensional creatures, see things in two dimensions. So in a way, we don't really see our world the way it truly is. A four-dimensional creature, however, seeing our three-dimensional world in three dimensions, would be able to see through things, would be able to see absolutely everything, just as we could see if there was um, several organisms spread along a 2D um, environment on your floor. You would be able to see inside houses, you would be able to see inside of people. So if a two-dimensional world, a flat surface, is just made of an infinite amount of uh, lines, then the 3D world is just made out of an infinite amount of planes. So the 4D world, logically, is made out of an infinite amount of 3D objects. Though they're not just put together like um, you would, like building blocks. It's, that's not how the 4D world is, that would just be 3D again. So in order to understand this, we need to understand the logical progression of mathematics in our world. Imagine that this connects piece represents the first dimension. It's simply a straight line, which is basically what the first dimension looks like. And if you add three more of these straight lines and connect them to, so that adjacent sides are perpendicular, 
and opposite sides are parallel, then you have the basic shape of the second dimension. You have a square. Now, if you keep going from here, and you add, four, add it so that there's a total of four squares, and all adjacent sides are perpendicular, and all opposite sides are parallel, then you end up with, obviously, a cube. So, if you tried to keep going from here, and you would have a four-dimensional basic shape, you would have a, what's called a tesseract. Now, I cannot show you a tesseract, but you need to understand that it's basically four cubes that are within each other that um, have all adjacent sides perpendicular and all, par and all opposite sides parallel. Yet there are three lines, connect uh, four lines connecting to each vertex. So a tesseract would look somewhat like this picture. Now that, that's not exactly what it looks like because this is a two-dimensional depiction and obviously not all of the lines are straight. So I cannot show you what a tesseract actually looks like because we cannot perceive things in the third dimension. You cannot even imagine what a tesseract looks like. You cannot physically, you cannot in your mind picture the fourth dimension or a fourth dimensional shape. And you can keep going on from the fourth dimension even. You can go to the fifth dimension, the sixth dimension, the 71st dimension. It doesn't matter. Theoretically, there are an infinite amount of spatial dimensions. A common misconception of the fourth dimension is that the fourth dimension is time. Now, while some argue that by going forward and backwards in time, if you move forward the same distance and backwards the same, then you would end up in the same place you started, just like in the fourth dimension. And while that may seem logical, if you think about it, it really doesn't make sense. If you imply that the fourth dimension is actually time, well, first of all, time is not spatial. There's a difference between space and time, quite obviously. And assuming that all dimensions are according to a pattern, then that doesn't really make sense either, because saying the fourth dimension is time, every dimension has time in it. So that would mean that the fourth dimension is special in some way, which doesn't really make any sense. Another reason this doesn't make sense is that we very, very, very slightly travel through time whenever we move due to the distance um, that light takes to get to our body. If a group of astronauts were to get in a spaceship and they were to go very, very, very close to the speed of light, then they would, and they, they went around in this um, impossible, nearly the speed of light spaceship for a few months, and then afterwards they returned to Earth. They would find that Earth had actually progressed a few years, so they had moved forward in time by moving that quickly. Another interesting concept involving the fourth dimension is that many physicists and even mathematicians um, may say that the dimensions are very, very slightly curved. Because if you really think about it, nothing can be truly, absolutely infinite. So imagine that a, the first dimension, the line, is just very, very slightly curved so that after a very long time, it will um, end up creating a circle. So. Um, as suggested by many physicists, if you keep going in the same direction, then you will end up where you are, where you started after a very, very long amount of time, obviously. And the same thing would happen to the second dimension. If it's just a square, and then you extend it very, very slightly in a curve, and it will eventually make a sphere. And the same thing happens in our dimension, except it will form a very, very slightly curved um, third dimension, which will form a four-dimensional universe, basically. So what this kind of means is that our three-dimensional world is within a four-dimensional world, and the four-dimensional world is within a fifth-dimensional world, and so on. Now, I did say that nothing can be truly infinite, but if this is true, and a dimension is really within another dimension, within another dimension, within another dimension, then I'm implying that there's an infinite amount of dimensions which is the only problem I really have with this theory. I'm not sure if it ever stops or if infinite infinity is really even possible. We don't know that. Thanks for watching my video, and I hope this gave you a better idea of what the fourth dimension is. Well, just because he disappeared don't mean he no longer, he's no longer. He could be working with them people. He looked like, he didn't look like no harm to nobody. He looked like he just super smart, and they could use that. I, I could see them employing that man. 
changing his name, giving him a whole new identity. But then again, if it's not, if it went the other way, man, prayers to his peoples. But he was going in. That little boy, smart, bro. I need to figure out his name though. But if y'all know his name, drop it in the comments. He was on one. And he was breaking that down to a T. He was breaking that down. Because I seen KRS One talk about that topic, but not that far in depth. Not that far with all that information. But we made it to the end of this. And if you made it to the end of this as well, please like, comment, subscribe, but hit that bell. So you make sure your post notifications are on. I know we come with them four videos a week. But it was a long video. I'm going to let y'all get on up out of here. And until I see y'all in the next one, man, we go.